All righty, welcome back to Texas Truck Channel, and we got another hill test for you. This one's a little, we'll just say, heavier duty than normal, and that's because we've got a big boy we're taking up, one of the biggest things we've ever taken up this hill, and well, let's just, let's tell you what it is. Let's get after it. It's a 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 Denali Ultimate. But the good news is it's four-wheel drive, and we have four auto, we have four low, and we have the G80, <clears throat> excuse me, the Eaton auto locking rear. Um, it just means it's not selectable, but it will lock when you spin them a little bit. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Being the HD, it is in four-wheel drive, it rides higher than the four-wheel drive half-ton does. I really, really appreciate that. I kind of wish the half-ton GMCs and Chevys rode just a little bit higher with four-wheel drive because they would do better in our previous test. Go check those out. You can see struggles. I don't think we'll have the same problems here because our approach angle is that much better. Now, the thing we're going to run into with this compared to a normal half-ton is the short bed is longer, which means the wheelbase is longer. So breakover could be a bigger issue than we're used to previously. So we're going to watch that drive shaft and make sure I'm not having problems there. Now, this is not the AT4 or the AT4X. So we don't have additional skid plates. We have the basics, but we don't have fuel tank and transfer case and like the full Monty that you get um, on the AT4X gives you a little more. The AT4 does. The AT4X, which is not here yet, which is going to be awesome in this, it gets all of them. So that's the good news. Wheel and tire though, let's start there, Craig. This guy right here is a uh, Goodyear Wrangler Trail Runner AT. It says AT, which means all-terrain. And check out the tread. It's more than you would think. It really is a highway tire with some bite. I'm happy with that. Um, you don't have a super durable sidewall, so this is not like a rock crawling tire. It doesn't have like a, this is a good towing tire. It's, it's got good belting, but it's not like a KO2 or something with a bunch of siping on the side. It's enough. And I'm curious to see how it does. This type of tire we've used before and it's done well in this silty kind of stuff but let's see what it does on the actual rock ledges. Um, coming on down, we've got power side steps, which are actually really good. My favorite side steps on the HD market, but as you can tell, they are not protected. So we really gotta watch that. They don't have additional plating underneath them. They actually have an LED light strip underneath them. So I really am gonna be precautious with that. I'm gonna be leaning on my spotter here to help out a ton with that. You also have, like I said, that longer wheelbase because this has a bigger bed than a half ton does. Breakover could be the issue. Oh, uh, you can get an even longer bed in these. You can. This is the short bed of the crew caps. So I think it's six and a half feet. Well, I'll, I'll put it in the comments, but you can get an eight foot bed on this too. So we're not doing that one today, thankfully. Okay, coming out back, you don't have a body mounted tow hook, but you do have a body mounted tow hitch that has good eyelets. You also you can install with a rear receiver, you can install any type of recovery hook there you need, which is good. That's going to be solid to get you out. You also know we're in the diesel because the sewer pipe coming out the back. But more importantly, Craig, in that axle is the Eaton Auto Locker, otherwise known as the General Motors G80 Locker. And what that does is if the left and right tire differentiate within 100 RPM of one another, it will lock a pin and make them one to one which is what you want for off-roading if you're going over obstacles. Now, the bad news is you can't select it before you get to the obstacle. You've got to let it do it on its own. There's a way around that. If you do a little bit of a power brake maneuver and force it to do it while you're sitting still, it'll lock before you go to the obstacle and it'll stay locked all the way through it. It's been effective for us in the past. It's a good option. One more thing that I need to not forget is the shocks on this guy are Ranchos, and that comes with this package. And it does ride better than you would think, but being a three-quarter ton, she's still awfully heavy. And the spring rate is huge because the payload is huge on this. It's 2,900 pounds. I can tow 18,000 pounds from the freaking bumper hitch, not including the gooseneck that's in the back. So all that covered, let's check out the goodies on the inside. Time to go to the inside and see what kind of goodies we do have. As usual, we're going to work from the least amount of goodies to the most amount of goodies and see if we need all of them um, or if we don't need any of them. So Brian, talk us through some of those goodies we get inside and yeah. what all we got. Let me show what we have. So down here, we don't, like I said, we don't have a axle lock like you would have on a ZR2 Chevy truck or an AT4X GMC 1500. We don't have that here. That's the auto locker. But over here, we do have modes. There's only one mode. There is off-road and there is normal. As you can see here in the center, there's your off-road. We're gonna use that. Um, at some point, we're not gonna start with that. And you also have your transfer case. You've got auto, two high, four high, and four low. So we've got all the goodies there. And something else that I like is that you have the center display. I have to get to it here. You have off-road pages that give you your pitch and yaw, your inclinometer, there you go, and your transfer case setting as well as your steering. So that center number is your steering angle, and this is your pitch and yaw with the vehicle. So you do have that. That also can be configured in the heads-up display, but that's really it. Cameras. Oh, excuse me, cameras. These are tools. These don't make you better off-road, but they help you see what you're about to hit, uh, which is nice. And there are a ton of them. You can look at your rear hitch. 
You can look at your front wheels, so this gives you an overhead, and then your left and front and right tires. I like that a lot. You can also toggle that to the rear tires, so you can see them if they're spinning right here or Craig's hand. And then you've also got your um, overhead front nozzle nose. You can see where your tires are going. So you have some goodies to help you out. Yeah, those are pretty good goodies. Not so, bad. All right, Brian. So we're going to try the main line, and which is the hardest one we have. It's got a pretty big uh, step we got to get yeah. over. What are we going to do? We're going to go be in too high. We're going to be in too high. In normal mode? Normal mode. See what we can do. That doesn't work. We'll try off-road mode. Are you going to do traction control off and then go to traction control, or what do you want to do? Um, let's turn it off. I mean, actually, okay. let's just leave it out of this. Leave, leave it out of this. Normal it driving. Yep. See what happens. Any predictions? I think you're going to need at least auto. She's heavy. Yeah, she's heavy. So this sucker is about 8,200 pounds. Uh, like Brian mentioned with the tires, the tires aren't bad here. They're a good hybrid compromise. They could be a little beefier if you're actually doing some more off-roading all the time, but this is a good balance of uh, towing slash highway. But we got to get up over this bad boy, and this bad boy is pretty steep and it gets pretty rutted out. And what happens is we get in the about right here and stuff starts going a little haywire because we lose traction. So let's see what happens. The weight's already coming into play early in this thing because we have no weight on the bed. <laughs> okay, okay. That, wasn't, so, that wasn't very far. So what that is, Brian, is that is the shortest amount of distance we've ever gone and had to go to another goodie. <laughs> okay. And that's exactly what you said a minute ago when we started off with is it's heavy. It's heavy. So I went full throttle there and traction control just said, we're going to keep the wheel speed at two miles an hour. And that was actually both tires were going. I saw on the camera here. So let's just go to four wheel drive. Traction off is not going to do this at all. For auto. Oh, well, actually, let's try off-road mode. We can do off-road mode in, in two-wheel drive. Two drive. Okay, let's see what it does. Start okay, all right, here we go. Uh, two-wheel drive, off-road mode. And so we got about right here, the back wheel. Let's see if we go past that. Uh, about the same spot. It's losing, but it's gotten a little farther. A little better. So traction control, the throttle mapping is helping some. He's probably got a floored. Okay. Okay. So it, oh, Brian, it did get us about another, oh, I don't know, I'd say 10 feet. You got 10 feet further okay. with the traction control or off-road mode. Right, so that's not nothing. No. At all, and I turned traction control off on that one too, because it wasn't, it was interfering with me earlier. That wasn't about traction on the ground, it was about me having more control. Uh, so that's better. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's try for auto and see if we actually get over it. Now, my concern is the nose a little bit, obviously, and then the break over, but and she's heavy too, it might want for low. So let's see what auto can do. Let's we'll see. Okay, there's where we stopped last time. Let's see if we can get past that. And we're well past that. Okay, so now we're gonna check the nose, spot them. We got the front wheels actually pulling and helping now. So it looks like we've got some room here. We're actually good. Just want to show you all so you can see we're still good. Is it good? Still good. So we, got the, so we got that wheel spinning and that wheel spinning. We're not locked up. Of course, the front doesn't have a locker, but we also don't have the center lock right now. So, Brian, stay right there for a second. Okay, we'll come over without falling. Okay. Oh, all right. All right, okay. so, Brian, we, we, one of the things we have going on is we don't even have a center locker right now. At the moment in the auto mode. Correct. And the left front is what's getting it now. The right. rear has engaged the lock. Okay. So I felt to do that, and I was getting equal spin there. What was happening is the left front was just going to town. Correct. Because there's not a center front lock. Right. So it's not it's sending more power to the front than it normally would. Right. So, so we're going to back up and slowly. I'll be honest. The difference between four low and four high is about the same. It's just it's locked. Right. Do you want to do four low? I want to do four high. Four high. Let's try it. See what we can do. All right, Brian. We are in uh, four high off-road mode. I'm going to turn off-road mode back off. Okay. Uh, we had it on with two-wheel drive. It didn't work. We're in, we're in normal mode. 
four high, not four auto. So the center diff is locked. Okay, normal mode, four high, center diff is not locked. Well, no, it is locked. It is locked, the rear minor might not be locked. Okay, so four high means we lock the center diff, four auto, we don't get that, um, which will help us in this off-road situation with loose traction. Should give 50-50 power split front to back, which will help that passenger front tire help pull a little bit more. But we don't get the gearing of four lows. Let's see what happens. Got it. See that front wheel needs a help. We don't have the gearing here, but it might be enough. It looks like it is. So we're gonna go slowly, make sure we don't hit the drive shaft, which you can see right down here. Good? Good. Okay, got up. Woo. All right, Brian, so that just goes to show that a center locking diff does help some. It makes a big difference, actually. And what it did is it splits the power 50-50. Four auto yeah. makes it move around. Um, when you put it in the center, when you lock the center diff in four high, it splits it 50-50. What, what's happening, I saw on camera, that front passenger wheel was actually helping. Oh, was it? Where before it was just doing nothing. So, so that the, helped a lot. On the first attempt up, let me show this real quick. On the first bump going up, this little icon right here, I know it's small, it's hard to tell, but it actually showed me which tires were spinning. And it was oh. this right rear turned orange and the left front turned orange for just a minute. That's cool. And then that's when, I, as I was backing off, I, I saw that. And so then after that, I heard the clunk and the rear diff locked. And then after we tried it again, because the center and rear were locked, the left couldn't just, it didn't have as much to play with and go crazy. And like you said, you saw the front doing more work. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of torque in this thing and a lot of weight, by the way. A lot of torque and that helped us here. Actually, the torque helped a lot in this. Fun, yeah. Um, we did have more modes to play with. We could have gone in off-road mode. And we could have gone low. And we could have gone four low, which actually would have made it even a little more, a little easier because it just gives you more control yeah. with all the extra gearing to go up a little step like that. But yeah. it made it. Also, Brian, an eight foot bed, I don't know if it would have made it because the drive shaft would have hit on that. Oh, was that close? Yeah, it was It was pretty, you had about that much room to spare, but it did clear well, it and it didn't rub or scrape anything. Well, and that's why the spotters too. If so. we ever get close on that, we're just not gonna do it. This is not a truck we can do that with. Right. But uh, no hybrid line, no bypass line. It did the full thing. Uh, very good, I'd say that's very ultimate. <laughs> good job, Denali. So thanks for watching. We got more hill tests coming your way. Please be sure to like and subscribe to these videos. Leave us some comments. We love the feedback and uh, that's how we keep making more of these videos. So uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.